are at the University of Minnesota Bee Research Facility on the St. Paul campus with Katie Lee, an extension educator from the University of Minnesota, and Gary Reuter, the Bee Lab coordinator. Today, Gary will be showing us different tools and equipment for extracting honey. To extract honey from frames, we need to go through three steps, uncapping, spinning, and filtering. Here, we can see two frames filled with honey. Uncapping refers to removing the thin beeswax covering the honey, called cappings, to expose your honey. Only when the honey is exposed using the proper tools and equipment can it then be extracted. There are a number of tools that can be used to uncap the honey cells. A scratcher fork, a needle roller, a heated knife, a heated plane scraper. When uncapping the frames, it is good to have a tray or box below to catch the cappings and a screen with space below it to let the honey drip through. Any honey that comes off with the cappings can drip through that screen and can then be used. Having a wooden bar across the tray with a nail can be helpful so that the frame doesn't slide around. In order to get the honey out, a hole needs to be poked in every cap cell. When using a scratcher fork, rub the scratcher along like this. As long as you poke a hole in every cap cell, the honey will come out. This method will leave bits of wax on the frame that will come out in the extractor. This isn't a problem when extracting the honey, but these pieces of wax can clog up the straining screen when you go to remove the honey from the extractor. Some people prefer to lift the cell off by putting the scratcher barely underneath the cells and then lifting them off. This will leave less wax to clog up the screen. Here, Gary is using an uncapping needle roller to poke holes by rolling it over the top of the frame. Similar to using the scratcher fork, there are bits of wax still on the frame that will spin off in the extractor. Scrape big chunks off the frame so it won't clog up the extractor spout. When using an uncapping heated knife, you need to have it hot enough to melt the wax. If you get it too hot, then it will burn the wax, making it difficult to cut. Typically, the knife will get really hot when first turned on. Then it will cool off and become pretty stable. Gary recommends waiting until the temperature is stable. Ideally, the comb is built up past the wood of the frame because you run the knife down across the wood. If the wax isn't sticking out, it isn't going to cut. Be careful not to cut or burn your fingers. With this frame, you can see the bees haven't built the honey out enough. You can take the knife to try to gouge the wax out, but Gary's preference is to use the capping scratcher to get the places the knife missed. The heated plane scraper is nice because it fits nicely between the frame. Because this is a newer frame, the wax is more fragile. Here, you can see the heated plane scraper pulled too much wax out of the frame. Gary says not to worry. The bees will fix it when you put the frame back into the hive. After uncapping the frames, here we can see leftover wax. Let the wax sit in a warm place overnight. The honey will drip and drain to the bottom, and most of the wax will stay on the grate, separating the wax from the honey. The honey that has dripped through can be strained and bottled. This wax can be melted down, which separates the wax from any remaining honey. When heat is applied, the wax will float and honey will sink. Once cooled, the wax can be peeled off the liquid and used for candles, soaps, cosmetics, lotions, or blocks of beeswax. 
With a two-frame tangential extractor, you put two frames in the extractor. Each frame has cells on both sides. This extractor can only extract one side at a time. So there's cells on this side, cells on this side, and then there's the center. And so uh, this can only extract one at a time. So the way this is gonna work, it's gonna spin around. The centrifugal force is gonna make the honey fly out. But because of that honey on the inside, we can't spin really fast the first time around. Otherwise the weight on the inside pushing outward can make the comb fly out of the frame. So we're gonna spin kind of slow the first time. Then we're going to turn around then we're going to go slow but speed up pretty fast. Then we'll go back and finish the first time. Normally, you keep the cover on the extractor for safety purposes. But here we are showing what it looks like when spinning the frames. As it begins spinning, you can see the honey hitting the sides of the extractor. That honey will run down and we will be able to get the honey from the spout on the bottom. Both sides of the frames are pretty empty now, so we can start going faster. You can watch down in the extractor to see the honey hitting the side of the barrel. When it doesn't hit anymore, you can stop. Now, Gary is turning them around to extract the other side of the frames. The radial spinning extractor comes in different sizes, holding 12 frames up to 120 frames. In the radial spinning extractor, the honey is removed from both sides of the frame at the same time. In a smaller extractor like this, it will take longer to get all of the honey out since the inside is moving slower than the outside. The wobbling you can see can be caused by various factors. Using a combination of new and old frames with different weights, or not all of the cappings have been removed. A disadvantage of the radial extractor is that the spinning time is increased. However, in this case, Gary doesn't have to manually crank it like his tangential extractor. You will need a bucket, a colander, and a straining cloth. These items will catch the bits of wax that were still on the frames from the cappings. Place them under the spigot of the extractor and then open it up to let the honey strain through the cloth. The honey is then ready to be bottled. So if you want to prevent bubbles, you kind of tip it and let it run down the side. Uh -huh. And then turn it off before it overflows. It should be right up to this uh, little ring right here. That's, or you could weigh it too. But. So this is eight fluid ounces of, of honey. Uh, which is 12 ounces by weight, mm -hmm. and honey honey is sold by weight, actually. Oh. Uh, and these are two different kinds of plastic. So this is the natural plastic. Mm -hmm. um, it's a number four. Um, this is uh, PET. The PET plastic makes it look better. Mm -hmm. um, show you that comparison um, but they're also they don't really last long so if you're gonna if you're going to want to refill uh, your beer then um, the natural plastic is better because really? you can see it looks it looks better in this clear plastic yeah. but um, but this is gonna crack or not come spring back when you press it sooner than this one. In summary, to extract honey from honey frames, you need to use a tool to open or remove the wax cappings covering the honey. The wax cappings can be saved to produce a variety of beeswax products. Once the honey is uncovered, it can be extracted using a tangential or radial extractor. 
The extracted honey can be strained to remove pieces of wax and then bottled.